The new grammar in Croy's Primer, Lesson 7, is fairly modest. Uh, the most important points have to do with the present indicative forms of the verb amy, I am, as well as the personal pronouns, um, all the various inflected forms for I, you, we, y'all, he, she, it, and they. Um, with regard to these pronouns, it remains essentially important to look at the case of the pronoun. That will be the clue to its function. Also being watchful um, uh, for when these pronouns appear as objects of prepositions, uh, because that, of course, is more important than the independent case functions uh, that we learn with the first and second declension. As we turn to the um, exercises, we find number one in the practice and review. Legate logon kata tu kuriu tu uranu. In this uh, question, we have a second plural present indicative active verb. Legate, you speak, you are speaking. Because it's a question, we can translate this are you speaking? Then we have logon, accusative case, uh, probably then the direct object of legate. Are you speaking a word? Then the preposition kata followed by its object in the genitive, tu kuriu. Kata followed by the genitive makes the kata mean against. Against the Lord? Which Lord? The Lord of heaven. Uh, another noun in the genitive. This time, the genitive functions as descriptor. Uranu describes kuriu, whereas the genitive here, to kuriu, was simply such uh, as a function of being the object of kata when it means against. Are you speaking a word against the Lord of Heaven? Number two. Hai psuchai humon echusin hamartian hoti estheate ton arton ton technon. Uh, here we find one of our first uh, personal pronouns in the exercises, um, the genitive plural form of you. So, yours, plural yours, the souls of y'all, if you will. Your souls, echusin. Souls is the subject, so we have a third plural verb. Your souls have hamartian, accusative case, hence direct object. Your souls have sin. Hoti here is probably going to mean because rather than that. Uh, echusin is not a verb that introduces perception or, or, or what have you. It's, um, so hoti here probably introduces cause. Why do your souls have sin? Because Estheete, second plural form of estheo, y'all are eating. Ton arton, accusative, simple direct object, you are eating the bread. Ton technon, a noun in the genitive, functioning as a descriptor of bread. Whose bread? You all are eating the bread of the children, or more simply, the children's bread. He adelfesu, kai to technon autes, esin en to ploio, al uk echusin artan. Here we have another two personal pronouns, both in the genitive. Su, and also autes. Uh, su is describing he adelfe. Your sister, the sister of you, your sister, Autes, is uh, uh, describing technon. Who's technon? Who's child? Her child. Because this is a plural subject, sister plus child, a plural subject, we have a third plural form of a me. They are. So then, your sister and her child are in the boat, n plus an object in the dative, but 
uk echusen, a simple third plural form of a verb here, but they do not have bread. Artan, accusative case, a direct object. He agape tu theu soze humas apo te samartias humon. Here we have two featured pronouns, humas, the accusative plural second person pronoun, uh, and then humon, the second plural genitive pronoun. He agape tu theu, the love of God. Love is the subject being nominative. Love is the subject of soze, the love of God saves. Here we have the direct object. Saves who? Saves you, plural. Saves y'all. Apo te samartias, from sin. Apo with its object in the genitive case. Humon tells us more about sin. Whose sin? From your sin. Um, Clayton's answer key has plural sins. Uh, that's technically not correct here. It is just a singular form from your sin, kind of a collective singular. Prophetes pistos u didaske kata tu namu. They don't look like they agree, but prophetes is the masculine nominative singular form of this noun, ha prophetes. Pistos, masculine nominative singular adjective. Um, so they agree with one another. The pistos will describe the prophetes. We know it's not predicate position because we have a real verb. A prophet does not teach. So we'll take this in attributive position. A faithful prophet does not teach. Kata, followed by its object in the genitive, means against, against the law. He agape te samartias mene en soi. Ego de pisteo hoti hakurias tele sozemse. Love, nominative singular, is the subject of this third singular verb, mene. Love remains. Te samartias, a noun in the genitive, functioning as a descriptor of agape, the love of sin. Technically, we could think of this genitive as an objective genitive. It's telling us the direction in which the love is going. So here, love of sin really means love for sin. But that's, that's the more important exegetical point, uh, rather than just worrying about how to translate it right. You can translate it, the love of sin. But um, we will think about several different nuances of this genitive relationship as descriptor, and pretty much here I would suggest it is love directed towards sin. Uh, we find this a lot. We could have the love of Christ, the love of God here, uh, which could indicate love directed for Christ or for God, toward Christ, toward God, or the love that God or Christ possesses for others. Uh, that would be a subjective genitive. In any event, for now, it's good enough to say the love of sin remains. Then we have n with its object, n is a preposition, with its object in the dative case. Here a personal pronoun in the dative case, in you. The love of sin remains in you. Ego de pisteo. Now, de introduces a new thought here, a contrasting thought. And the ego, being a nominative pronoun, is emphatic. It's emphatic because we don't need it at all. It's redundant. And redundancy uh, creates emphasis in Greek. Pisteo alone means I believe. Ego de pisteo means but I believe. And then the haughty clause gives us the content of what is believed. I believe that the Lord wishes, Lord is nominative, hence the subject of this verb, fele, the Lord wishes, sozein, an infinitive, um, 
in effect the object of Thele, what does the Lord want? The Lord wants to save. And to save also, being verbal, has a direct object, or has the capacity to have a direct object, which is here supplied by a pronoun in the accusative case, to save you. Estie ha achlos ton arton tes geis, al uk echusi tadora tu uranu. Just to throw you a curveball, the subject of the verb comes after the verb. This is actually quite typical in Greek. Haoklos, the nominative, is the subject. The crowd eats. Ton arton, a noun in the accusative case, gives us the direct object of eats. The crowd eats the bread. And then another noun in the genitive case gives us a descriptor of the bread, the bread of the land, or the bread of the earth. Allah, strong contrastive conjunction. Notice that the alpha at the end has dropped before a word beginning with a vowel. Here, uk, al uk. But, uk echusi, echusi, third plural form of echo, I have, echusi, they have. It's negated, but they do not have ta, oops, ta dora, a neuter plural, possibly nominative, possibly accusative noun. Um, since gifts is not going to be the subject of this, really uh, the, uh, the people that make up the crowd are the subject of this, we're going to take ta dora as accusative, the direct object. They do not have the gifts. What gifts? This noun in the genitive offers a description, the gifts of heaven. We might actually think of this as a genitive of source. The description is telling us where the gifts come from. The gifts from heaven might be a way to think about this. I just add that for edification, not to suggest that somehow you should know that from what you read in lessons one through seven. Not at all. Number eight. U lambanamen dora apotu theu katata erga hemon ala katatein agape nautu. Lambanomen, we receive the amen ending, first plural. We receive. It's negated with u. We don't receive. What don't we receive? This neuter plural accusative noun tells us. And of course, we're going to take it as accusative rather than nominative, because we already have our subject in the amen, the we receive, and dora is incompatible with a we subject. So it must be the object. We do not receive gifts. Apo tu theu, simple prepositional phrase, from God. Kata ta erga. Kata, now followed by its object, ta erga, in the accusative, meaning then kata is in line with, according to. So we don't receive gifts from God according to the works, hemon. Another one of those new personal pronouns, a genitive plural of the first uh, plural pronoun, ours, of us. So according to our works. But according to how to his love, according to his love. Hoi du loi hemon, balusi lithus, ace top loyon, hoti auto thelusi luane. I should say luane. Hoi du loi, nominative, is going to be the subject of the verb, balusi. A third plural ending, they are throwing. Hoiduloi specifies the they. The slaves are throwing. Hemon is a pronoun, the same pronoun we saw in number eight. Of us, a genitive pronoun. The slaves of us, or better, our slaves, are throwing lethus. Lethus, a noun in the accusative. Um, hence the direct object of Balusi, are throwing stones. 
Ace top ploy on simple prepositional phrase into the boat. Um, haughty is here going to mean because rather than that. You just can't make that work here. So haughty is introducing the reason for this strange action on the part of our slaves. Auta thalusi luang. Now this is a bit tricky. Auta here is a neuter singular accusative pronoun. Could also be nominative. Um, but we know that this is not going to be nominative. It cannot be the subject of the verb. The verb thalusi is third plural. So the slaves are still the subject of this verb they wish, they want. Auta, being accusative then, will be the direct object. It's neuter because it's referring back to this neuter noun for which it is standing in. Ta ployon. They wish Luane to destroy it. Number 10. He dikaya akue tes phones tes aletheas kai soze ten psuche nautes ek thanatu. He dikaya akue. Akue, third singular verb, he, she, or it hears. He dikaya, being nominative singular, tells us the subject. Uh, who's doing the hearing? Dikaya is just an adjective. It does not modify any noun here. It is acting substantively, as if a noun itself. Hence the righteous, and since it's feminine in English, we need to add woman to communicate the grammatical gender of he dikaya. The righteous woman hears tes phones uh, akuo again here is taking its object in the genitive case a peculiarity of that verb here's the voice tes aletheas this noun is in the genitive because it is functioning as a descriptor of of voice what voice is the righteous woman listening to the voice of the truth and soze, he, she, or it saves, probably Hedekaya is still doing the saving, and she saves, or is saving, tein psuchein autes, tein psuchein, accusative direct object, she is saving the soul, autes, a genitive pronoun telling us whose soul, she is saving her soul, then a simple prepositional phrase, from death. Ginoskamen hoti su e ha angelos tes zoes. Meta su hoi huioi tes basileas esim? Ginoskamen, simply um, the first plural ending, on ginosko, we know. This kind of verb tends to uh, be followed by a statement of content. Thus, hoti here is probably going to be that. We know that. And then su e. Um, su is emphatic here because we don't need it. Just e on its own means you are. You are ha angelos, the angel, te soes, genitive of life. But with this added nominative pronoun, this becomes emphatic. We know that you are the angel of life. Then we have a question. Meta su hoi huioi tes basileas eisen? The spine of the question is hoi huioi eisen. The sons, nominative case, subject, are. Tes basileas is a genitive noun describing huioi, the sons of the kingdom. Meta su simply with you. Are the sons of the kingdom with you? Homathetes uk eche ten hamartia, didaske gar kata ta nomon tu theu. Homathetes, um, these actually agree, though the endings ha and ace look nothing alike. Mathetes is a nominative masculine singular, just like ha. This would be then the subject of the verb eche. He, she, or it has. Who has? The disciple has. It's negated. Uk. The disciple does not have. 
Tain hamartian, accusative direct object. Sin. The, the disciple does not have sin. Didaske gar. Gart says, all right, here's a rationale, a reason, a supporting argument for the first claim. For he, she, or it teaches, in this case he teaches, it's obviously hearkening back to the disciple, for he teaches kata ta naman. Kata, with its object in the accusative case, means according to. He teaches in line with or according to the law, and then a noun in the genitive, Describing law, whose law, what quality of law, the law of God. Diaton ochlan ton paneron, pempe hotheos tus dulus autu, eis ton oikan. This whole first block of words is just a prepositional phrase. Diaton ochlan. Dia followed by its object in the accusative means um, on account of, because of, because of the crowd. Then we see ton ochlan ton poneron all agree in gender number and case. So ton poneron, that adjective, probably describes ochlan. It's in, as we would expect, attributive position on account of the wicked crowd, on account of the evil crowd. Pempe ha theos. Atheos, nominative singular, is the subject of pempe. Pempe, third singular of pempo, I send. He, she, or it sends. Who's the he? Atheos, that nominative replaces the generic pronoun inherent in the ending. So God sends, or is sending, tus dulus, accusative plural, direct object. God is sending the slaves. How to, a pronoun, genitive, um, describing slaves, whose slaves, what slaves. God is sending his slaves. And then finally, another prepositional phrase, into the house. And then finally in this set, leges hoti egoemi ho hagias, sude ublepes tein basileon mu. Um, this is getting a little Johannine in flavor. Uh, leges, you, just one of you, you are saying, or you say, and then haughty, following lego, tends to mean that. It's about to introduce the content of what you are saying. You say that, ego eimi, hohagias. Well, eimi is a new word in this lesson. It means I am. I am hohagias. I am the Holy One. Here, hagios, the adjective holy, is uh, functioning substantively. There is no noun that it is modifying. It is becoming noun-like itself. And in this uh, phrase, in this sentence, ego is emphatic. The nominative pronoun ego is emphatic because we don't need it. Amy hagios is good enough. I am the Holy One. Ego suddenly underlines the I. You say that I am the Holy One. Then in the second half of the clause, with this de introducing a new thought, here again a contrasting one, and another nominative, another nominative form of a pronoun, su, being very um, uh, emphatic then. But you, ublepes, you do not see. Tain basileon accusative direct object, you do not see the kingdom, mu, genitive pronoun describing kingdom, you do not see my kingdom. So, I mean, you could write this however you want, but we might conceptualize of the I and the you here, whoops, as particularly emphatic because of these nominative forms of the pronoun added. A few scriptural sentences from the Septuagint, from the Book of Wisdom of Solomon. Um, in the Apocrypha, as far as Protestants are concerned, in the Old Testament, as far as Catholics and Orthodox Christians are concerned, kai hoi pistoi en agape pros menusin auto, I'm oh, sorry, auto. Hoi pistoi, 
we can deal with. That is a substantival adjective. See, there's no noun for this article and adjective to go with. So the article is substantizing the adjective pistoi. And the faithful. Prosmenusin is the main verb here. It's something you have to look up on the vocabulary on page 40. They will dwell. They will remain. They will abide. And it is uh, uh, given here with a dative because, you know, they will abide can't have really a direct object, but it, it, it often has um, a dative of accompaniment. Will abide with him. En agape, in love. And the faithful will abide with him in love. And then from Numbers, Kai autoi enenkan todoran auton, kurio perites hamartias auton. Had to leave a few words out there that were just too weird. And they, a nominative plural pronoun, emphatic, nominative pronouns always are. You have to look up this next verb. It's a past tense verb. They offered... They offered what? Ta doran. Here, an accusative direct object. Uh, we know it's not going to be nominative. We already have our nominative taken care of. Um, and they offered the gift. Auton, a genitive pronoun describing gift. They offered their gift. Curio, dative of indirect object, to the Lord. Perites hamartias auton. Peri, followed by tesamartios, genitive, concerning sin. Um, and auton is a genitive plural pronoun, further describing hamartios, sin, uh, concerning their sin. We tend to think of that in English more as for their sin. And from the New Testament, Revelation 20. Kai edoken he thalasa tus necrus tus en aute, kai ha thanatos kai ha hades edokan tus necrus tus en autois, kai ekrithesan hekastas kata ta erga auton. Um, a lot to look up here, like edoken, he sheer it gave. But we see this, he thalasa, we recognize, okay, nominative singular, this is the subject of the verb. The sea gave. The sea gave what? Here we have an accusative supplying the direct object. The accusative happens to be an adjective, tus necrus, functioning substantively. The sea gave the dead. But then notice there's another article here, followed by a prepositional phrase, en aute, in it. The aute here refers back to the thalassa. This is feminine singular, just like the noun that it is replacing is feminine singular. That's how you can connect a pronoun with its referent, its antecedent. Um, we wouldn't translate this in her in English simply because for us, the C is just an it, whereas uh, for the Greeks, the C was grammatically feminine. Um, then, what do we do with this? Well, this tus necrus tus en aute, the en aute is in the position of an attributive adjective. This is the way that Greeks connect a prepositional phrase with a noun as a descriptor of the noun. Which dead? The dead that were in it. So the sea gave the dead that were in it. Gave up the dead. Gave back the dead that were in it. And, hothanatos kai ha hades, and death and the grave, you can see Hades here, the underworld, death and the underworld, gave again. This time we have tus necrus tus en autois. This is now masculine plural, this pronoun, looking back to, or replacing, thanatos kai hades, two masculine nouns. Even if this were one masculine and one feminine noun, this pronoun referring to both would end up being masculine. So, 
uh, death and Hades gave back the dead uh, that were in them. Kai ekrithesan hekastos. Hekastos is nominative. We can see that. Uh, and it means each. Each uh, of them um, were judged. Uh, technically, this is third plural. You don't have to know that. But they were judged, each one of them. Katata erga, auton. Katata erga, according to the works. Auton, genitive, descriptor, whose works? According to their works. Autas gar sose ton laon autu apo ton hamartion auton. From the Christmas story in Matthew. Uh, for for um, gar, this sentence is, is offering a reason or explanation for the verse that comes before. Why should we name this kid Jesus? Because autos sose. Now you have to look this up. This is the future of Sozo, uh, he will save. And the autos here is the pronoun, uh, he, in the nominative, uh, so emphatic, for he will save. Then we have ton laon, accusative, direct object. He will save the people. Autu, a genitive. Whose people? He will save his people. Apo ton hamartion, from the sins, auton of them. Uh, just for the record, auton here, um, while, it, while it's also genitive plural, uh, doesn't actually agree with ton hamartion. Um, it is, uh, it is a, a, an added entity to this sense unit, so we don't look at this and think, ah, agreement, ah, attributive position, no. Uh, but we think from the sins, and then uh, then a pronoun of them from their sins. And then finally, en tuto estin he agape, uk hoti hemes egape kamen ton theon, al hoti autos egape sen hemas. So we get to see uh, a number of pronouns at work. Hemes, we as subject. Autos, he, himself as subject. Hemas, we as object, hence us. And tuto, you, you'll have uh, the form tuto in the next lesson, in lesson eight. In this is, and then we have actually the, 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 the subject of this clause, love is in this. Love is here to be seen. Love is in this. Uk hoti, not that, we loved ton theon, accusative direct object, not that we loved God, but that he, emphatic, he loved us. Accusative, uh, again, is direct object. We move then to the English to Greek sentences. We have your plural bread, but we do not wish to eat it. We have, straightforward enough, we want a form of the verb echo, um, and we want to have the first plural ending, so echomen. We have your bread. Always in Greek it's the bread of y'all, the bread of you, plural. So. How are we going to do this? The bread in the accusative case, since this is the direct object of have. We have ton arton. Then we want your bread, the, the word in Greek that will express possession, that will describe the bread as belonging to y'all. Um, so we're going to look down from humes to humon. That's uh, the form that we want here. Ton arton humon is y'all's bread, as they say in the Deep South. We have your bread, but strong adversative. 
Obviously, you could also use uh, de here if you put it second in second place in this clause, but really, ala is the stronger but, and de, de can really swing. It's, it's both and and but, depending on the context. We do not wish. Well, we know the verb we're looking for is thel, fellow, I wish. And we want the we form, men, and we want to negate it. So, ooh, men. Wish to eat, to eat. We want the infinitive of estheo here. To eat it, it. We want a pronoun, want a form of autos that will go, uh, that will look back to arton appropriately. Now, for us, it is neuter, but this it has to refer back clearly to arton, which is masculine. So we'll actually use an accusative masculine singular uh, form of autos here for this pronoun. Echamen ton arton humon ala u thelamen estien auton. If you absolutely have to use de instead of ala u thelamen, we would have u de thelamen. And that position is important. De never shows up first in its clause. The crowds are speaking against the prophet. The crowds would be the subject of the verb they are speaking, so we'll want the nominative plural of the crowds. Hoi, achloi. The crowds are speaking. They are speaking. Lego, I speak. Legusi, they speak, or they are speaking. Against the prophet. For against, we want to use the preposition kata, followed by its object in the genitive. Prophet in the genitive. Tu prophetu. And now that I see kata comes after legusin, I know I don't really need the new. And you all don't have to worry about that level of stuff, of course. Hoi achloi legusi kata tu profetu, because the prophet does not have gifts for them. Hoti will work just fine here. Hoti because the prophet does not have. The prophet is the subject of the verb he, she, or it has. So we'll want the nominative singular. Ha prophetes. The prophet has, uh, he, she, or it has, we want eche, and it's negated. It's not that the prophet has, the prophet does not have. So, ho prophetes uk eche. Does not have what? Gifts. Gifts. Uh, we want the neuter, uh, plural accusative form of, of todoron here. And we don't need an article, because it's not the gifts, it's just gifts, kind of unspecified. So, dora. For them, um, in Greek, this would just be them in the dative case, as indirect object. So, autois would complete that sentence. Then, Number three, a good boat saves souls in the sea. Uh, a boat is the subject of saves, so a boat is going to be in the nominative case. And um, since it's, it's just a boat, we don't actually need the definite article. We'll just use ployon. Ployon saves. A boat saves, he, she, or it saves. That looks like soze. Whoops. Now, what kind of boat saves? A good boat. 
So we want to put in a form of kalos or agathos here that agrees with boat in gender number and case. Let's go with agathos just for the heck of it. Agathos. You could use kalos. Uh, whoops, my bad. Agathon. You could use kalon as well. Ployon agathon soze souls. Souls is the direct object. So we'll want the plural accusative form of the noun psuche. And that would be, hmm, psuchas. Save souls where? In the sea. Simple prepositional phrase, perhaps. N with the dative. Te. Excuse me. Uh, there we go. Te thalassa. Thalassa. We could do without the N as well. We could simply delete that and it would still be correct, but New Testament authors actually do tend to use N most frequently for location rather than just the bare dative. But the Lord, here again, we'll gravitate to our strong but. The Lord saves. The Lord is the subject of save, so we'll want the nominative form of Lord. Saves, he, she, or it saves. That would be the third singular that we're looking for. So they from sin. A simple prepositional phrase. Apo is probably what would represent this in Greek better than ek. Ek is out of, apo is away from, in effect. So apo is what I'll go with. And uh, sin being kind of a... Um, what's the word, a, um, an abstract quality here, would likely show up with a definite article in Greek. If you didn't do that, that's not a problem. Um, apotes hamartias. According to the law, love is the way of truth. According to the law, to get that meaning, we would use the preposition kata in Greek, followed by its object in the accusative case. So kata, the law, uh, ha namas, put in the accusative, ton naman, according to the law, love is the way. Love is the subject of the verb is, so we'll have the nominative form of he agape. Hmm. He, she, or it is, that is the uh, third singular form of a, me, esten. Love is the way. The way is not the object of Eston, it is the predicate nominative. It is what renames the subject. So, uh, as in all such constructions with the verb to be, um, that which renames the subject will also be nominative. So the love is the way. He hados in the um, nominative case as well. And then of truth, describing the way, what way, the way of truth, uh, we'll put truth in the genitive case, making it a descriptor. Taste aletheos. And again, because truth is an abstract quality, it probably would be used with a definite article in Greek. This is not something I expect you to have picked up from the reading. I'm just pointing it out now. Now, bonus round. Usually there are only four questions in English to Greek uh, uh, exercises. I see you, but you do not see me. And the I and the you are in italics saying um, we want this to be emphatic. So we're going to use nominative forms of the pronoun ego and su in these sentences. Ego. I really wish it wouldn't auto-capitalize. There we go. 
ego and su will be used in this sentence. I see. Blepo is what we want. Just one of you, and you is the object here, so we'll have se. I see you, but you do not see me. Um, because these clauses are so closely related in syntax and what have you, I would be tempted to go with de in this instance. Allah would certainly not be wrong. You could say Allah su, or you could say su de, do not see. Um, you see would be blepes. You see would be blepes. And we want to negate blepes, so u. Su de u blepes. Me, we want the accusative of the, of the pronoun. There. And if we wanted to make the objects emphatic as well, we could um, simply use the, uh, the more emphatic form. So, for example, instead of se without an accent, we could add an accent to say this is the emphatic form of the pronoun. And here on me, uh, we could make it instead of me, eme, which is the more emphatic form of me in the accusative case. And that brings us through um, all the homework for lesson seven. I hope that you found your questions answered and problems addressed. And if not, um, email um, those specific questions so that you are not in any way left behind.